What was the better year? 2018 Thor or 2024 Hooper? I'm going to break down some objective stats that I've figured out. Before I get into it, go ahead, pop in the comments what you think. And if you think it was me, go ahead and share the video and let your friends know to come watch and learn. Now, 2018 Thor, I have said in the past, he was the strongest human to ever walk the planet. And in some ways, I believe that. But strongman isn't about who is the strongest on the planet. It's who is the best strongman on the planet. I think if you put force transducers against us, if you had a one rep max deadlift, if you had uh, Husafel Falkiri, Thor would certainly be the strongest person of all time. But if you had a grip event, if you had a stone walk event, I believe if you had a max overhead press, particularly if it was axles, if you had... Uh, frame carries, if you had endurance-based events, uh, I believe that I would be better in those circumstances compared to 2018 Thor. But I have broken down all of the stats, and I'm interested to see what you guys think. I've done this as fairly as possible, and there are nine categories by which I've compared these years. Win rate, number of years, major wins, event win rate, event podium rate, comparable event performances, world records, depth of field, and competition at the top. From these nine categories, I think we can relatively concretely say who has had the better year. Now, win rate, this is where Thor gets me first. He won 100% of the shows that he had. He had five shows that year, Europe's Strongest Man, Worst Dubai, Arnold's Strongman Classic, and World's Strongest Man. He also did Iceland's Strongest Man, but I'm not including that because the second strongest in Iceland is really not, they're not even someone who would make it to Giants Live more often than not. So it's a bit of a walkover for Thor, and I think more of a national pride thing than it is a true strongman contest to see who's the strongest. My win rate is 89%. I went eight of nine and I lost at World's Strongest Man, which is the biggest knock against comparing the years. I didn't win World's Strongest Man this year. And that is to the lay person, the best, most prestigious competition. To the people in the sport, some would say World's Strongest Man. Some would say Arnold. Nowadays, some would say Strongest Man on Earth. Rogue Invitational pays the highest. So sometimes people think that uh, or athletes believe that that holds the most importance, I guess, depending on where you're at in your career. But nonetheless, I lost a very, very meaningful competition in World's Strongest Man. For number of wins, I had eight and Thor had four. I had four wins at Giants Live. I won the Strongest Man on Earth. I won the, I won the Arnold. I won the Rogue Invitational. And I won the Arnold UK. Ironically, I won three of those, excuse me, four of those against Thor at the Arnold, the strongest man on earth, the Arnold UK, and the Rogue Invitational. Now, granted, it's a different version of Thor. I'm not using that as a real piece of evidence. Nonetheless, I won eight shows and Thor won four shows. When it comes to major wins, we both had three major wins. Mine were at Arnold, strongest man on earth, and the Rogue Invitational, and Thor had Arnold, world's ultimate strongman and world's strongest man. I've counted that category as a tie. We're both on three. Again, I think the world's strongest man does hold a lot of weight, uh, but nowadays I think strongest man on earth holds a substantial amount of weight as well. For event win rates, I competed in 51 events overall. I have eliminated the events that I didn't have to try because I already won the show. For Thor, when I looked at all the data and I looked at the results of the contests, he doesn't seem to let off the gas ever, even when he's in the lead by a substantial margin. He went 12 for 28 for event wins, and that's a 48% win rate. I went 25 for 51 with a 49% win rate. For event podium rate, Thor went 23 for 28 with 82%. In the top three, I went 48 for 51, 94% in the top three. So I win that category as well. Right now, it is 3-1 to me. I do put a caveat disclaimer on this. There are so many variables that we don't know about if there was strategic losses or strategic energy saving moments. Uh, but again, this is the closest we can get to comparable events. Now, this is where I think, uh, or uh, an accurate comparison, I should say. This one with comparable event performance is where I think we have the best direct comparison because we actually did a number of similar events over the course of the year. First was the timber carry at 7.1 seconds for me, and Thor was at 11.8 seconds. This is the 400 kilo frame carried up the 12 meter ramp at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Funny enough, 
Thor this year actually bested that timber carry rate. So while she's still improving areas, he is better in other areas. We both did the max elephant bar deadlift and he absolutely whooped me on this. 2018 is when he did the 472 kilo deadlift. I did 431 at the Arnold. That was slightly strategic. I did a 442 on a barbell and the hum or the uh, elephant bar is definitely easier than a standard deadlift bar. I won't listen to anyone who says otherwise. The whip does not account for the difference in the fact that it's an elevated pull. Nonetheless, there's absolutely no way I could do 472 on an elephant bar as it stands, but I will continue to work towards that. We both did the Apollon's wheels. I did five reps and he did four. This is an axle cleaner press at 400 pounds. The one thing about this, though, I don't know what his time limit was. We were permitted to lift the bar off the ground and complete the rep if the bar was off the ground. So I did four within the time limit and I did one slightly after when I lifted the bar off of the ground. I'm going to count that one as a tie because I believe the rules were different back then than they were that I had. And I think I completed four in the allotted time frame, as did he. We had a max log. Both of us had a max log. This is still when Thor was doing Giants Live contests. At the World Log Lift Championships, I lifted 210 kilos. Thor lifted 213 kilos. Now, these are fixed jumps. For me, we went 170, 185 uh, 200, 210, 220, 213 was not something that was available. Uh, but I believe that three extra kilos certainly would have been on the cards. So I'm going to consider this one a wash as well. The last one we did that was identical was the car walk. And I did this in 10.65 seconds. This is a 1000 pound car over a 20 meter course. And Thor did this in 13 point two seconds. So that's another win for me in the comparable event performances. I win three events. We tie in two, uh, excuse me. I win in two events. We tie in two events and Thor wins one event. So I have a two, one slight advantage on that. When it comes to any sort of world records, I hit a 218 kilo axle world record and he hit a 43 kilo bag over bar for 15 feet. I don't know how to hold these weights differently. Uh, I, Thor could not have done a 218 axle and I could not do 43 kilos over 15 feet. So I've just considered this one a tie for the most part. The one big criticism on strongman at the moment is that the, the competition at the top and the depth of the field isn't the same as it was back in the day. And I will agree when it comes to deadlifting that back in 2018, you had so many guys who were incredibly strong. Dimitar Savatinov, uh, Brian Shaw, Jerry Pritchett, uh, Eddie Hall. Uh, it was a very strong deadlift group, but it wasn't as strong of a group when it comes to speed and to medleys. Uh, so the, the sport has changed a little bit. It's evolved a bit, or to, in some people's opinion, it's devolved a bit, but it's, it's certainly just a different setup now than it was before. And I don't think you could reward or punish anyone based on the events set out in front of them. But we can look at the depth of the field. What I did is I went to every contest and I looked at the bottom half of the field and just pulled out notable names from each. I'm not going to give my opinion on who is a stronger field of competitors. I don't think that's respectful for me to do, but I'm happy for you to speculate about it in the comments. For me, I had Maxime Boudreau, who's a world's strongest man, uh, podium finisher. Bobby Thompson, who's finished on the podium at the Arnold twice. Matt Rag, Alexei Novikov, world's strongest man. Uh, winner and Ivar Smoxillis, someone who has more international wins than either Thor or I. Those guys all ended up in the bottom half of at least one show this year. Thor had Dimitar Savatinov, Rano Heinle, Jerry Pritchett, Luke Stoltman, Terry Hollins. In terms of competition at the top, Thor had Zadrunas, Brian Mateusz. Uh, he also had uh, Martins in there as well. But at this stage, Martins was really uh, elevating himself quickly, but wasn't the dominant Martins that we knew a couple of years later. One thing to note about Zadrunas in 2018, he had an Achilles injury at World's Strongest Man that took him out. He didn't compete in the Arnold. He had, uh, he had nerve damage in his back that year, uh, and it was a very, very down year. He was not competitive to fight for titles. Uh, so really, it was Brian and Mateusz who were the biggest threats to Thor in 2018. Martins, I would say, alongside those would be the three. I have uh, Thor. Of course, we all know him. 
Tom Stoltman, three times World's Strongest Man. Evan Singleton, uh, five times Giants Live winner, World's Strongest Man podium finisher. Trey Mitchell, who I believe this video in a few years' time, when I say Trey Mitchell, uh, it's going to hold even more weight than it does now. But he has won the Shaw Classic twice, now the strongest man on earth. Uh, and Luke Richardson, another person where I believe if you look at this video in a few years, Luke Richardson will be another name that holds even more weight than it does now. When it, the only assessments I'll give when it comes to competition at the top is a, a prime Brian Shaw or a very fit Mateusz. I believe that they are slightly better on average than some of my competitors, but I believe I have way more competitors who could genuinely vie for the titles. So to recap, I have more wins, better event win rate, podium rate, better comparable event performances, and Thor has a better win rate in shows, and otherwise we tie. So of these nine categories, I win four, Thor wins one, and we tie on four. I am 100% open to hearing the differences that you guys believe that there are in the fields, differences in what you guys believe to be our actual capacity. If Thor was holding back back in the day, if I was pushing harder, uh, if I got lucky with some event selections, whatever it may be. Um, but I think depth of field is up for debate. Competition at the top is up for debate. And I'm going to leave that debate to you guys. And I think that's where this ultimately rests is who were you competing against and how much, do we respect the fact that we both were able to beat them on average? And does me not winning World's Strongest Man totally take me out of the question anyways? Go ahead, leave your thoughts in the comments. I really love this conversation, not because I need to stroke my ego or because I think I'm better, but because I'm just honored to be in the same conversation. Thor in 2018 versus me this year is something that I would have absolutely loved to go head to head a couple of times. And Thor is on the way back. He's going to get his pressing back for next year. I'm crossing my fingers that I'm going to get full Thor, that we are going to be able to have these battles that all of the fan wants. And we'll be able to answer this question for good. But let me know in the comments. As per usual, lift heavy, be kind, and we will catch you tomorrow.